Good morning. Today I am going to attempt to put together a brief little information sharing video that explains how I do my photography from a canoe or kayak. Notice that I say canoe or kayak because I'll use either one. If my primary goals are wildlife photos, then I'll use either a camouflage canoe like this Discovery Sportsman 119 or I've got a camouflage kayak. And often when I use them, especially in the spring when wildlife seems to be extra skittish, I will put a camouflage cover, a 3D cover over top, and I'll show you pictures of that. And then I'll also wear a ghillie suit so that I, I can be nearly perfectly hidden and get right up on, on wildlife or just sit in place and let them come to me. Through this video, I'll also show you some of the other techniques that I use. You have to understand, there's no science behind this. It's just practice and, and uh, trial and error. And so far, so good. Let's take a look at what I have in this canoe with me. I have this double-bladed paddle. Yep, I paddle a canoe. Primarily, I paddle it with a, with a double-bladed paddle. It's just more efficient for me. Um, but notice how I've got camo tape wrapped below the... Um, drip rings and then I've also got this fabric cover it's just a gun sock that I use to um, break up the break up the sharp pattern of it if it's laying out plus that also cuts the glare for anything that might be flying over my tripod which I don't have set up right now is is there that too has camouflage um, covering that I can pull up over it and get that nearly completely covered I have two dry bags. I have this bright green one in that. I've got a Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter lens. In this yellow bag, I have a Nikon with an 18 to 18 millimeter to 200 millimeter lens. And then I'm shooting this with a GoPro um, Hero 7 right now. Thinking about up upgrading, but haven't done it yet. Depending on what I'm going to do, I may mount a a pole up front or a tall selfie stick, a handmade selfie stick out of an aluminum pipe up front or in back so that I can get a different view of me as I'm paddling. Um, but not often do I do that. It all, it all depends what I'm doing. One thing that's really important to stress is the need for insurance. I explained that I have a 200 to 500 millimeter lens with a camera body. I've got an 18 to 200 with another camera body. And I've got this GoPro that I'm using right now to record. Um, I did get caught in a windstorm a few years ago that, that caused damage in several counties. I couldn't get off the water in time. My kayak filled with, with um, pond water, lake water. And I had three, three sets of camera gear laid out in the bottom and they were all destroyed. So the, the, the good news is I had, it's called Inland Marine Insurance that I pay it on my homeowners at premium. I also have my cell phone on that, by the way, it seems to be cheaper. Um, but I've, I've got that Inland Marine policy where you list out all the equipment. And then I only carry out here what I need, but um, you gotta have that insurance. If you're going to be doing this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest getting out here on the water with the, this, kind of, this kind of money invested if you don't have that insurance. Also, wear a life jacket. Be sure you've got something. This is a self-inflating. I've got the traditional style as well. And then use your head. Don't go out on a day when you shouldn't be, be going out. Um, I'm not so worried about temperature. Well, I am if you go in, because um, but I do paddle year-round. I'm more worried about the, the sudden things that could throw you. That'd be the wind, um, um, high water, you know, flood waters. You know, use use some common sense, and you'll probably be okay. Um, I do have to say though that being out in in this canoe or or one of my canoes or kayaks, it allows me to get so much closer to wildlife. And um, as I'll show you here later in the video. Uh, I, I have seen some, I have documented some experiences that most people wouldn't even know existed here in Iowa. And I've been able to do it solely because I've been on the water. So um, we'll keep going here for a little bit and I'll, I'll show you a few more setups. I'm going to try to give you a view here. This is the, this is the way that I do this when I'm shooting with, a, with my tripod. Uh, I've got my, my cover on my camera and lens. And then if you, if you can imagine that I often have a cover over the canoe or the kayak, and then I may have, like I said, may have a ghillie suit. 
but I've got this positioned in front of me so that I can paddle. My, my paddle would be then up here, would be up here in front so that I can navigate and make those small adjustments to get closer to whatever it is that I'm pursuing. That said, it is not uncommon for me to just handhold it as well if, if conditions allow for that. Um, the, the tripod does help for much sharper images, but by going with a higher ISO, it's much more convenient to shoot without this. I got a lot more flexibility, and uh, so far it's, it's worked m m most of the time. Um, have I had a couple of issues? Yes, probably, but uh, for the most part, it works to, to handhold, handhold too under the right conditions. This is the view, or the technique that I use. Again, today I don't have the camouflage cover on the canoe, and I don't have my ghillie suit on. But imagine if I did have um, all of that on. Uh, I, I'm able to get in pretty close. I want to explain now this GoPro setup that I use. <clears throat> Currently it's a GoPro Hero 7 Black. Um, physically it's mounted with a good strong good stout clamp that I clamp either to the thwart or the gunnel or the tripod or wherever I need to clamp this clamp the camera the audio is a bit more complex than just straight out of the box GoPro audio I use a shotgun mic with a furry windscreen it, and as much as I can I try to have that that shotgun mic face in the opposite direction <clears throat> so that the fur from the windscreen doesn't doesn't hang down ever so slightly and show up in the video and then I've also got this lapel mic to take care of any of that audio that we that we are getting from facing the wrong direction both the shotgun mic and the um, lapel mic are connected then to wireless transmitters and below the below the um, GoPro there's an adapter that I had to buy and a special frame I had to buy and connected to that is a wireless receiver that takes this external audio from either one mic or two mics and runs it then into the GoPro so that it's so that I've got much better audio quality. The quality on these cameras, if I'm just using the the mic that's built in, it it's, it works, but boy, it's not that good. The drawback to having this adapter and these external mics is it's no longer waterproof, but I just have to take that into consideration then when I'm using it. <clears throat> As for video, I do run it, uh, I run Pro Tunes, so I may have to shoot a clip over and over uh, depending on like today with the sun changing and um, coming up over the trees or back, backlighting me with by using Pro Tunes. Uh, that allows me to adjust my sharpness, my, my um, aperture. Um, or my ISO, my exposure compensation. I've got a lot of variables in there that I can adjust using uh, using Pro Tunes. And anything that I can do to make the video um, exactly what I want when I first shoot it makes it a whole lot easier than later on so I don't have to mess around on the computer forever with each clip adjusting, the, adjusting it in, in post-processing. I'd like, I like to spend as little time as possible on the computer messing around with the clips. So it's better to invest the time as I'm shooting them than it is to have to correct them later on uh, behind that uh, computer screen. What you're hearing now is an example of that shotgun mic facing backwards. And it's actually um, where it's pointed is very close to where the blades of my kayak paddle are, are slicing through the water. So it does a really good job of picking up that nat sound, that natural sound of the, of the um, kayak paddles as they move through the water. And then of course with my microphone, my lapel mic on my chest, that gives, should be giving very good, very clear audio um, for, the, for the voice narration. One issue I have learned with the wireless mic system is you really have to watch the batteries. They don't last forever. And if they, if they start to go out, I don't necessarily know it. So I've got to watch the color on the flashers, uh, the LEDs, to tell me when the batteries are going dead. And anymore, I'm not going to wait until they go completely dead because I get um, extraneous popping or, 
or odd noises in my audio track that I can't take out. It may help if I explain that I spent uh, a good share of my young life working in a television station in the engineering department. So adapting consumer, consumer grade equipment that's really quite high quality and making it work to do more than, than what was intended straight out of the box. So that kind of comes natural when you've got that, that experience and, and education and Kind of a, a, I guess as my family says, a bit of geekness in me. I'm sometimes asked, where did the passion for being outdoors and being on the water come from? And I gotta say, years ago, uh, when my wife and I were first married, I spent most of my time hunting or fishing and uh, was had a pretty pretty good string of success but I got to a point where the being out was so much more important than actually taking taking game so I started carrying a camera with me when I was either bow hunting or where I was I had a shotgun or whatever I had with me to to hunt hunt for meat and I found that if I had a if I had a camera in my hand, that's when the deer would walk by. And if I had the bow in my hand, that's when the fox or the coyote or something else would come by. So I had to make a decision. And I've, I've pretty much made the decision to hunt with a Nikon or whatever camera equipment I'm using. I do that probably 98, 99% of the time. That said, I do occasionally hunt every now and then, but not very often. And I have been known to take my camera equipment along Hunt, uh, join others when they're hunting, such as pheasant hunting, and then I just try to document the outing. I'm much more interested in the outdoor experience that that tend to be therapeutic for me than I am for the, the uh, actual killing part. I'm not opposed to it. It's just my personal preference. I hope my explanation for how I do what I do and why I do what I do makes sense and, and might actually be helpful for those who want to shoot pictures or videos on their own. Will it work for everybody? Probably not, but it gives you at least a starting point and maybe you can avoid some of the pitfalls that I did or maybe you can fast track right to the better ways of doing things and um, you know learn from others. I will put together here at the end of this video, I'm going to share just a, a handful of pictures that I have taken over the years using these on the water techniques. Um, I have been very, very fortunate. The good Lord has blessed me so many times with great uh, wildlife interactions. So I'm going to share a few of those at the end of this video and uh, hope that they give you some, some enjoyment. And if you're interested in shooting pictures, maybe some, some uh, incentive to get out and give it a try yourself. With that, I thank you for watching.